Today we're going to be talking about some very disturbing allegations that have been made about the lead guitarist of the band All Time Low named Jack Barakat. So with that being said, there are going to be some things that we talk about in this video that may be disturbing to some viewers, but of course I will always do my best to censor certain things in a way that it's as least triggering as possible and also so that this video is appropriate for YouTube. Innocent until proven guilty in the court of law, that's just the way things work. Some of these things in this video, they are alleged. They are not proven to be true so I cannot speak on them as if they are true however I will give them a voice with what they did say because just like how they aren't proven to be true they aren't proven to be not true the reason why I'm doing this video is because I saw that the newest allegation that was made against Jack Barakat or Barakat I don't know how to say his name properly don't get mad at me down in the comments the person that made these allegations and this statement against them I had saw it and it had less than a thousand likes on it at that time I think it had like 600 or 800 likes so a lot of people hadn't seen it yet and then it ended up getting removed. So the account got suspended by Twitter and I'm not sure if that was All Time Lows doing, but I'm willing to bet that it probably was. So as soon as I saw that it got removed and they hadn't said anything about it and it was really hushed up really quickly before a lot of people saw it, I knew that I had to talk about it in the event that it's true. But also with that being said, there's a chance that things like this aren't true. So that's why I decided to make this video because while there are things that are alleged, there are things that I have seen and heard with my own eyes and my own ears from the band that I think is highly inappropriate and the statement that they made there were a lot of things in it that I was very disappointed by and we will also get into that and I will express to you guys what disappointed me in their statement and why it did in case you're unaware of who all time low is they are an American rock band from Towson Maryland and they formed in 2003 there are four band members consisting of the lead vocalist rhythm guitarist Alec Gasgarth, the lead guitarist Jack Barakat, who we will be talking about a lot in this video, as well as the bassist backing vocalist Zach Merrick and the drummer Ryan Dawson. It's said that the band took its name from lyrics in the song Head On Collision by New Found Glory, and they began as a band in high school. In 2004, All Time Low released their debut EP, The Three Words to Remember in Dealing with the End. When the band was first formed and they were still in high school, they were covering songs by pop punk bands such as Blink-182. Since then, the band has released eight studio albums and they have been very, very popular. They have a very large fan base and a lot of their fans are very, very young. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Jack Barakat because a lot of what we're going to be talking about has to do with him. He was born June 18th in 1988, making him a Gemini and 33 years old today. When I tried to read anything about him online, I just find a lot of pages just talking about how he was really good looking and yada yada yada. There's not really too much about him online other than he has three siblings and that apparently he's referred to as the Lebanese prince by his parents. Parents. Now, the reason why we're bringing up Jack Barakat is that a lot of these allegations are actually against him. But before I share the allegations, I want to mention something that is a known fact that for me, when I learned this, it led some truth to what some other people are saying. Abigail Kathleen Breslin was born on April 14th, 1996, making her an Aries, and she is an American actress and singer that was born and raised in New York City. She began acting in commercials when she was only six years old and she made her film debut in M. Night Shyamalan's science fiction horror film Signs. And for this, she was nominated for a Young Artist Award. Following this, she began acting in numerous roles as a child actress. She was in Raising Helen, Princess Diaries 2, Definitely Maybe, Little Miss Sunshine, and Zombieland. Now, back in 2013, according to a report by US Week, it was reported that Jack Barakat and Abigail Breslin were dating. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning this is that at the time, Jack was 25 years old and Abigail was only 17. According to US Weekly, he had joined her at the premiere party for her new movie, Ender's Game, on October 28th in Los Angeles. So speculation began that they were dating. But either way, why would a 25-year-old be joining a 17-year-old at a premiere for her? 
her new movie. Also, to add to the speculation, Jack had visited her on the set of her upcoming movie, Maggie. According to the US Weekly's source, the couple was keeping a low profile because of their age. So it was definitely a thing where they were hanging out and around each other. Now, when I tried to open up this article that all of this had originated from, it says, oops, we can't find what you're looking for as if it's been removed. Now, there hasn't been a lot of Jack's relationships made public apart from the fact that he had dated the Playboy model, Holly Madison for less than a year after meeting her from Twitter in 2010. Now I'm mentioning this because when I was looking at these allegations that were made against Jack Barricat, a lot of people were neglecting the fact that it is known that he dated a 17 year old, which is bad enough. Now I have seen people say, well, the legal age of consent is 17 in some places, in some places it's even younger. I don't really care. As an adult, as a 31 year old woman, I can tell you that the way that I think today is completely differently than the way that I thought when I was 17 years old. I was very immature and very young and I had a lot of learning experience and life experience that I needed before I got with someone that was an adult and I was a very young girl at one point with an older guy and it was incredibly detrimental and it's not something that I think anybody should be advocating for. And also with that being said, I don't think a lot of these people that say that there's nothing wrong with an adult being with a teenager, either you're an adult that would be with the teenager or you're not an adult because there's no way somebody with a sound mind would think something like that is okay just because it's legal in some places. Just because something is legal, it doesn't make it right. There's something that's really disturbing to me about a grown, matured adult wanting to be with someone that is not grown and mature. It's very easy to prey on people that are that age. A lot of times people who were teenagers that dated an adult, I was one of them, they didn't realize at the time how messed up it was until they got that age and then started being like, I'm the age that person was when they dated me when I was this age. For me, I looked at it and I was like, I would never date someone that's that age. They're so much younger than me. They look younger than me. They act younger than me. I just couldn't even process wanting to be with somebody like that. And that's when you start realizing how weird it is unless you're one of those messed up people. Now, I wanna make a comment about this whole bra situation. Apparently the band collects bras. Now, if you know anything about bands and musicians, a lot of times at concerts, there are a lot of flashing and girls do throw their bras up on stage and even their underwear, things like that. But the thing about all time low is that they have a very large fan base that are very young. So there are a lot of very young girls that are throwing their bras up on stage. There are photos of them with the bras hanging off of their microphones. There are photos of bras hanging off the ceiling in their, I'm assuming their tour bus, I'm not entirely sure. So these young girls not realizing how weird this is will go to these shows and they're with their friends and throw these bras on stage thinking there's nothing weird about it because they know that they're gonna keep them and hang them up like the head of a deer. Whose kids belong to this? I can't believe there's only one naked person in this room. These are really small. I think these are a lot bigger. Hey, the person that really gave that to you is offended now. They should be offended. There's like a lot of padding in here. We actually gauge whether we're having a good show based on how many bras we get. Ten or more, it's gonna be a great show. If Any there's, if there's a lacking a lacking amount, then we're sort of like, this wasn't our crowd. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're like, we gotta work on this market. After seeing that they encourage bras being thrown up on stage and hearing a lot of the disturbing things they say to their audience, some of the things I will be playing for you guys shortly, it led me to wonder if all of their shows are at least 18 plus. It doesn't make it any less weird, but at least you could look at it and be like, okay, everybody at these shows were adults. So I looked it up and it says, generally, if you are under 18, you may have to be accompanied by an adult. Currently, all time low concerts have no restrictions. Now, that doesn't mean that some of their shows didn't have restrictions. I've seen some where people are drinking at them and things like that. So there's definitely a possibility that some of their shows were 18 plus, but it's for sure that not all of them were. There are a lot of witnesses that have said that they were under the age of 18 hearing very disturbing things being said at their shows and the bras being thrown on stage. Now, I have seen people say about this bra situation, they have said, 
said that you can't control somebody throwing a bra up on stage. And I do agree with that. There are a lot of concerts where people will throw their bras and undergarments and girls flash and things like that. And difference between those shows and these shows, not only were the all time low shows not 18 plus, where they were encouraging them throwing bras up on stage, but the fact that they were encouraging it, that they were in interviews saying that they viewed how good of a show they were having based on how many bras they got, that they were hanging them off their bodies and hanging them off their microphones and their tour buses and collecting them and like showing pictures of it, bragging about it in interviews, that is encouraging them to be continuing to be being thrown up there. They're responsible for that. They're responsible for encouraging that behavior. If they weren't encouraging it, if they weren't hanging the bras around everything like trophies, then I would say they can't really help that. But the fact that they were encouraging it, because when I initially saw the bra thing, I was like, well, you can't really help if people do that anyways. But then I saw that it was like a thing with them. And that's when I was like, were there shows 18 plus? And then I found out that they weren't. And I'm like, okay, that is messed up. Where is their apology and acknowledgement for that? Now, I've also seen people defend it saying that they donated the bras to shelters. That is not a very good defensive statement. They could, you know, get up on stage and encourage their fans to donate to homeless shelters, encourage their fans to give food to the homeless. Instead, they were encouraging their fans to throw bras on stage and then saying that they were gonna donate them to homeless shelters to make it sound better. There's no need for that. Sure, they need clothes, but they also need food they need shelter. If they truly cared about the homeless and this was some sort of thing for in order to help them, then get up there and encourage people to donate. Don't get up there and encourage people to throw their undergarments at you. I've heard that they stopped doing that. I don't know if that's true or false, but I did hear that and good. I'm glad they stopped doing that, but where are their apologies for the things that are out there that they've done? I also saw on Twitter a bunch of people talking about some of the things that they say while they're on stage age that are very disturbing considering they do have like 13 year olds etc in their audience. Some of the things that I saw that they were saying that they said talking about BJ's. You look good! Do it. No matter what happens today everyone is getting a BJ. <laughs> Guys, girls, happening. animals, it's all, it's all happening. And I myself have seen videos, for instance, where Jack was making comments about one of the girl's chests, just looking down in the audience and making remarks about her body with bras hanging off of his microphone. Man, you're I cannot confirm that in all of these shows where they were saying things like this that they weren't all 18 plus. I can't confirm that, but what I can tell you is that in some of the videos, you can see how some people look really young. And also, even if it is 18 plus, I think it's highly inappropriate to be talking about your fans like that, especially considering that there is a power dynamic. And this is not something that is just an issue with the shows at all time low. This is an issue with a lot of bands, a lot of actors, politicians, even YouTubers. And even though I cannot confirm that those videos were not all 18 plus, I did see this tweet that was posted with a video where someone said that he was 17 years old when this comment was made about him. Good, are you dude? Yes. Good. You look manly, but I think I could take you. <laughs> in like a sexual way, not like a violent way. Yeah, no way he wanted to fight, but he went no, in, yeah. in the sack for sure. In the sack, yo. Yeah. Now let me get into the reason why I am making this video and that is the accusations that have been made against Jack Barakat. Now I have seen that there have been 97 allegations and I tried to find all 97 to confirm in this video if that is true or not and for full transparency I could not find 97 of them. I did find tweets where people were saying they were 14 or 15 or 17 or 16 and certain comments were made about them. That is what some people are considering an accusation, which I agree it is an accusation. If those things are true and those things were said to them when they were under age, that's enough. Now what initially blew up was there was a TikTok that was made and I will show you guys that here. You 
and she was very vague about who she was talking about, but in the comments, things became a little bit more clear that she was referring to all time low. She said in the comments, they literally tried to take my bra for their nasty collection and offered me beers. They got my friend's phone number and prank called her for months. If all time low was letting underage kids on their tour bus, that's really, really disturbing. And then after that, there was somebody that made the account on Twitter called ATL Statement. I will read some of it for you guys, but I will post it all if you would like to pause it and read it. They were talking about some very disturbing things that have been going on between them and Jack Barricat since they were 15 years old. And apparently to make it even more disturbing, they have known him since they were 10 years old. They said that their mom used to take them to all time low concerts and that they used to talk about how cute they were. And then when they became 15, they started sleeping with Jack. I saw this Twitter statement when there was less than a thousand likes on it. The last time I had looked at it, it had about 2,000 or something. And then I went to check to see if All Time Low had made statements against what they were being accused of, and at the time they hadn't. Then I went back to the Twitter account and it was suspended. As soon as I saw that the account got suspended, but they had not made a statement, that's when I started looking in deeper to All Time Low and started finding all of these other things that inspired me to make this video to compile everything together so that you can form your own judgment on what you think. And then finally, they made a statement and I'm gonna read part of that to you guys right here. The allegations being brought against us are absolutely and unequivocally false. When a TikTok video gained traction a few weeks ago, alluding to inappropriate behavior within our camp, we chose not to respond because of the glaring inconsistencies in the story and the apparent reluctant to mention us by name. Now here is my issues with this part of that statement. Here's here's the thing that I have a problem, is that it appears in their statement that they made that they're only responding to the TikTok, but they're not responding to the tweets that I saw that someone's account got suspended when it only had a, a few thousand views. So to me, that led me to believe that they were only willing to respond to the thing that got the most attention because it was the thing that most people were bringing up. For instance, the statement made on Twitter of the account that got suspended, that didn't get as much attention. Not as many people were talking about that. So they felt like they didn't need to respond to that. But that's my issue is because the accusations that are in that are far more severe than the TikTok. So why would they respond to the less severe accusations but completely ignore these more severe ones? We felt that a response would have elevated and escalated an outright lie and in doing so robbed the actual victims of their very real and very important collective voice. We believe victims, we stand with victims. We have only ever wanted to cultivate and nurture a culture around around our shows and band that is welcoming, healthy, and safe. The issues that I really have with this is that there's a lack of acknowledgement and accountability for the things that we do know. There are videos and proof that they have made comments about underaged kids at their show. And to be completely honest with you, as a 31 year old woman, if I was in the position of one of these things that I heard Jack say, where there was this girl that was in the audience and he looked down and he started making comments about her chest. And I've heard other people say that he made comments about their chest, etc. If that was me and I was there watching a band or whatever, I wouldn't be flattered by that. I would be really, really weirded out that you're making comments about my boobs on stage in front of, you know, hundreds or thousands of people. And I can assure you most women don't want you to make comments about their bodies. Where are the apologies for things like that? Where are the apologies for comments that are literally recorded that you made about people? You didn't apologize for anything, yet you're saying in your statement that you support, you know, victims coming out against what happened to them, but you're not even acknowledging or apologizing for the things that you have done. I've seen a lot of people argue that it was a different time. I don't care if it was a different time. You should still be accountable and apologize for the things that you have said. You shouldn't be able to sweep things like that under the rug. Not only that, you have a large fan base and you're sending the complete wrong message to young boys across the world that are fans of you. You're teaching them that they don't have to apologize for the wrongdoings and that they don't have to make them right. And as someone who is a fan of a lot of All Time Lows music, I'm very disappointed in that. The rest of the statement reads, it is with that in mind that we have to state without right certainty that 
that what is being said about us is completely and utterly false. We are investigating further the source of these accusations and will be seeking legal recourse as we take these allegations very seriously. With that in mind, we want to say again, we stand with victims and always wish to amplify the voices and stories of those who have suffered abuse and trauma, but we cannot and will not fuel or amplify lies that only cloud and distort the true stories of those who need to be heard and represented. And I'm not going to read the rest, but if you would like to pause it here and read the end of their statement, by all means. And then Jack Barakat quote retweeted it and said, while the four of us wrote the statement together, I feel the need to personally refute the claims being made against me and us as they are 100% false. So here's my conclusion and here are my final thoughts about this entire thing. You know, there are a lot of people that I have seen say that the statement made on Twitter or on TikTok or the tweets that people have made that where's the proof? My question to you is where's the proof that it didn't happen? If you're going to use that as your argument, then you better have an opposing one. If All Time Low as a band is truly in support of victims of SA in the music industry as well as, you know, in in the entertainment industry in general, I think that they should apologize for the things that are recorded and proven that they have done. Now, as far as the accusations against Jack Barricat, if there is truth to them and if the band knows that or if they are aware of his behavior, they should probably do something about that. You can save all time low by removing the person that's doing these things. There are a lot of bands that have had to do things like that in the past and I respect them a hell of a lot more than the bands that stick up for and defend their bandmates that they know have done these things. And also, if you're going to have a show that is not 18 plus, you shouldn't be on stage making horrible comments like that. You shouldn't be encouraging them to throw their undergarments up on stage for you because you parade them around like a trophy. You shouldn't be pointing at people in the audience and making comments about their chest or talking about how you want to sleep with them. Frankly, you shouldn't be doing that even if it is an 18 plus show because that's really incredibly messed up and highly inappropriate. And they should have made a statement apologizing for those things. That's not okay. The fact that things like that can just get brushed under the rug because either they don't do it anymore it sends the wrong message to your fans. It sends the wrong message to the entertainment industry and the music industry as a whole that people like this can say things like this and do things like this and then not be accountable for it. In order for there to be real change in the entertainment industry and the music industry, then people like that need to start owning up for where they did go wrong because that proves that you're headed in the right direction. But if you ignore it and you act like things didn't happen, that's not a good look. Anyways, this video was made from somebody that's a fan of a lot of All Time Low songs. Like, they have a lot of music that I really like, and honestly, I don't want to listen to their music and be thinking about this stuff, but that's on them. If they don't want their fans to be thinking about this stuff when they're listening to their music or to boycott it, then you should probably do something about it other than the statement that you put out. And I just want people who are victims of SA, and I don't care if it's from a neighbor and a nobody, or a family member or if it's from somebody that's famous. I want you to know that your voice is heard on this channel and that I'm going to listen to your story. I'm going to hear what you have to say because I choose to come from the belief that most people are inherently good and yes, there are going to be some people that lie. But also to that, I want to say this. I've seen a lot of people saying that people come out with these statements for clout for attention. Do you see the kind of attention that SA survivors get? A lot of times they get more negative attention than positive attention. Sometimes it ruins their lives. A lot of people who come out and speak out about these things are not heard. Nobody's getting positive attention or clout from something like this. A lot of these people come out with these stories because unlike some of you that don't believe them, they are caring about other people being potential victims of this. A lot of people live with guilt feeling like if they don't speak up, if they don't say something and take the chance of the backlash, that another kid is going to get hurt. I just choose to think about if the allegation that that girl made was true on Twitter, 
I just choose to think about how she must be feeling right now after her account got suspended and seeing all these people not believe her. And that breaks my heart. I would really appreciate you guys giving this video a thumbs up and also leaving a comment down below to help with the algorithm when you guys like and when you comment, even if you just comment an emoji or something just to help bump this video, that really helps. Your guys' interaction is what pushes my videos out there into the YouTube algorithm. I want people to hear this full story because a lot of people People are getting like little snippets of things and they're not really getting the full picture and I think it's really important with stories like this that you see the full thing you see what is true what isn't true and what is an accusation and then after you have everything then you can really be able to form an opinion on it so please help me bump this video so that it will hopefully get pushed out there so more people will see it and if all time low or their management or anybody like that happens to watch this video I just encourage some sort of of accountability and that's all I'm gonna say with that also if you guys would like to become a member of my channel I post more personal videos and I post them every single week or at least I try to sometimes I miss a week but I definitely post several times a month and it's just more chill over there I have like 30 plus videos that as soon as you become a member will become unlocked with more being added all the time and just so you know when you become a member you're directly helping support me and it really does mean a lot to me it helps me be able to create content with you guys and spend time on these videos and I really really appreciate it but if you don't want to join it's totally fine because you being a subscriber is good enough for me so definitely hit subscribe if you are not yet already and I will definitely be doing more videos like this because as you guys know on my channel I'm very very passionate about it thank you guys so much for being here and also for tolerating the fact that I look like an absolute hot mess piece of crap today <laughs> thank you guys so much I love you guys and I will be seeing you guys for another video very shortly